Yeah. Shit, the crap doesn't get inside if I can never get a cup of tea, eh? Yeah. I'm nowhere near as hard a, a man as Dad is. So I, I've got nowhere near his work ethic. When it's as intense as, as running a dairy, an old-fashioned dairy, it's too much. It's too much for a 72-year-old. I think, I think if, he, if he doesn't stop at some point, some injury will befall him or some illness which will force him to stop one way or another. And people do hang on until they're in their old age because um, maybe the retirement options aren't that good and they'd actually rather keep on farming and keel over in the yard. And does that happen? Yeah, I, I know with two, uh, two neighbours of my dad who, who kept on farming and keeled over in the yard, yeah. <laughs> Literally. I knew from when I was a very young age that I wanted to farm. I came here in 1972, 55 upwards years. It is a long time, um, but you wonder where it's gone, where all that time's gone looking back. Yeah. You, you don't get excited about thinking you're going to make money anymore because I think you realise that by about 12 months after you started farming or something. But nevertheless, you keep trying. <laughs> Most farmers are younger than me now and so they aren't quite like me in as much as I'm one of the last probably of, of the generation who has come and farmed and without another job and without my wife going out to work to a job and brought my family up and survived off what this farm and subsidy payments has brought in through that door. And I've managed retiring off the amount of money that you accumulate in stock and machinery certainly isn't, isn't enough to buy a house and retire off. I think you should be entitled to um, to something like that. The hours that people put in are really long. The animals are there all the time and you have to be there all the time or someone has to be. And so, yeah, I, I would say that pretty much across the board, people aren't rewarded with an adequate amount of money for the amount of labour that they put in. I think it goes beyond fiscal poverty and into sort of cultural, social poverty to a certain extent. I mean, there's, there's quite a high suicide rate among farmers and there's probably quite an uncharted mental health problem among farmers because they tend to be from maybe more conservative backgrounds and aren't so keen to talk about problems. This is where the problems start to come in. Everybody gets old, everybody leaves home by the youngest one and suddenly he's on his blinking horn, looking round, peeping round, doing all the work that all these other people used to be there to help with and the money just isn't there to, 
get help from anywhere if, if there's any help to get. And it's just work, 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 work. There's no interest if, shall we say, England are playing Brazil in World Cup. There's no interest. Brexit, piss off. Everything in their head is what's around them. The cows, the sheep, the dog, and work. And this has got to be done and work, work, work. And that's an angle that's wrong. It, it should, there should be some way of stopping that happening. Well, we're working on your own, like I don't have enough hands. If Adam wanted to farm, and as you know, he's more wanting to do it organically and do it Adam's way and conservation grazing. What he's trying to achieve now, um, I think there's a niche there for someone to do it. And he could be the one. Anybody looking at me and Helen with with 20 sheep um, and and a few lambs and kind of pottering about isn't going to take us seriously. But then, you know, we're not really expecting them to. Like I say, it's the first step. We're, exper like we we're experimenting with ourselves apart from anything else. Kind of see whether we make the grade. I'm questioning my own, my own actions all the time because actually it turns out it's quite difficult to be a sustainable farmer. It's not the, it's not the easy road. What happened? I think I can put my hand on my heart and say that it probably would have went better without you. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely still learning. We're one year on with the sheep. There's so much to know about the land and looking after it and how the sheep will work on it and, and ultimately be able to produce something that we're proud of. I wanted to be a farmer when I was nine, then I wanted to be a florist, so I guess I'm farming flowers. <laughs> <laughs> In my teens, what I wanted to do was read books and play the drums, so no, I didn't, I didn't see myself being a farmer, I couldn't wait to get away. Life's not linear. A lot of my personal happiness is from working outside. I've always gone back to the farm. It, it, it's just always felt like home. I'm trying to get myself into a position where I have a farm and, and that's the basis for my life. What we're doing with the sheep is enhancing 
or trying to enhance the diversity of wildlife. If people want wildlife and diverse countryside, then and supporting nature-friendly farmers, that's what people need to be doing. You don't really switch off. I wake up at night thinking about <laughs> what's happening, what we could be doing. It's really, really hard work, but you're just out in it, connected to it. It's really easy to write it off as an idealistic life, but it's hard, but you realise that you're working on something, so it feels worthwhile. Why wouldn't you want to do it? It bothers me that if you want to produce food um, to high kind of environmental standards, you have to sell it for a price that uh, reflects its quality, and therefore you're immediately cutting out the people that um, can't afford or don't think that they can afford quality stuff. And I mean, that's, that's institutional. That, that's an attitude that people have, is that quality stuff's for somebody else. And so, you know, it, it just... I hate kind of having to put a message behind food because at the end of the day, food's just food. And you should really value it. But, I mean, surely we should do that inherently without having to dress it up in nice packaging and say, oh, it's organic and, and vegan and visitors at Facebook and Instagram. Have you, have you something to build with? It's hard work. We've made a living, but um, it's a way of life that you're brought up into. You don't do it for money, really. So, there you go. Did you ever think Adam would be a farmer? I didn't really think he was showing all that much interest, even though he, even though he was helping me. I, I never really, I never really thought him of being anything more than an academic, I guess. But yet he loved uh, he loved his sport and he loved hills and and everything. Uh, Did you want him to be a farmer? No. No, I don't think I did. Come and see me, your old man. I'm an aging old dog, but I'm pushing back the time. So many moons and a sun silhouette I'll tell you a story about where I'm going next And I was once a lad Fit as a fiddle too Now look at me now, I'm a shadow of you Made some mistakes, we all make a few You can learn from mine and I can learn from yours too So come and see me, wouldn't that be nice I'll tell you a story all about my life Cause we all get to know time But time awaits for no man And we all get to know life But life awaits for no one But we come to know the best way so 
come and see me and I've been nice I'll tell you a story all about my Down. Down now. Whoop, whoop, whoop a bit. Right. It's on. Yeah, so um, the tree's kind of in the way, but that's Gummer's How over there. Um, and my dad grew up uh, this, this side of Gummer's How. And uh, our place where we are now is just over the side of this little hill here. Um, this is you, Barrow, so we're kind of a stone's throw that way, really. It's cool, and actually the, um, the other reserve um, that I'm going to be renting is uh, a piece of land that uh, my granddad rented back in the day, so kind of like, yeah, the, there's connections there which, um, you yeah, know, I've not tried to cultivate them deliberately, but it's great, it's really cool to be taking on a bit of land that my granddad had once. Um, for different reasons, but uh, you know, hopefully I won't make a mess of it. <laughs> I've got roots that I can't seem to get away from, even though I've tried. Because because the experience of life on a farm is quite intense. You you find yourself in some unusual places at unusual times. There's, there's grace in that, even if it's like a horrible wet night and you're trying to lamb sheep, it's, it's really, I don't know, it's another level of living. I've found and made and had the opportunity to, to make that what I do for my work, so why wouldn't I do that? And this is one way that uh, is fairly true to me, that I can, you know, make a little bit of difference to the state of wildlife, hopefully for the positive. Oh, you'll not age well, me bonny lad. Blackthorn, Blackthorn. Cross your chest, you'll tear a fair old gash. Blackthorn, and our winter's wind will come. If you run yourself around like that, Blackthorn, Blackthorn A rusty barb will turn your skin to rags Blackthorn, and a winter's wind will come